Hello everyone, this is SharkRay24 here, finally coming at you with the second episode of my Let's Talk LGBTQIA Plus series. So the reason this episode took so long to come out was because for the longest time I was trying to put everything into this episode about gender, and then I, did, and then I realized that this video would be like over an hour long and it would be super hard to make and to maintain and in general it would just not be a good time for me or anyone watching. So I've decided for the whole series that for each subject I'm going to be breaking it down into smaller bite-sized episodes for your enjoyment. So with much overdueness, if that's a word, uh, let's finally jump in to episode 2-1, Gender more than meets the eye. So, the first thing that you think of probably when you think about gender is someone's biological sex. This is the gender that is assigned to you at birth based off of medical analysis. It's typically determined by a multiple a multitude of factors that are including but not limited to your genitals, your chromosomes, and your hormones. There are other things as well like bone structure, um, but those are the three ones that most people think of. Now while most people do tend to think of this as a hard cut male and female, you're either one or the other, Science has recently proven that it's not as clear as that. And there's actually a large array of intersex genders. Now, what do I mean when I say intersex genders? If you remember from the last episode, we talked a bit about it. Someone who is intersex could have any number of mutations or conditions that make them not fit in to the biological male or female box. You can have, uh, the, the typical one that is thought of is when someone has both pairs of genitals. Um, there's, there's also when someone's internal genitals does not match, match their external genitals. Sometimes their chromosomes don't match their hormone production or their hormone production doesn't match the genitals that they have. Uh, there, are, there are even cases when people are born with more than two chromosomes or even with only one chromosome. So, you know, the typical XX or XY chromosome is not present in those cases. And I'm going to link this video up again in the card. I linked it in the last episode, but it's just really such a good resource for this topic of intersex individuals and it, they, they can explain it a lot better than I can, even after doing a bunch of research. Uh, I'm not too great with the whole biological science-y stuff. So this leads us into section two, which is about gender identity. So what is gender identity? Gender identity is different from biological sex as it relates to one's own view of themselves and their role in society. A simple Google search will net you with this simple definition right here. Gender identity, noun, a person's perception of having a particular gender, which may or may not correspond with their birth sex. Now this definition itself is pretty good. It does have some problems with it. The main one being um, the whole perception idea because the thing about gender identity is that people's perception of gender is going to be different throughout the world. Our perception of gender here in America in modern day is a lot more different than the traditional gender roles of the Native American peoples who lived here before we ever got here. And this next slide actually touches on that a bit. My clicker will work. So like I said, gender identities will vary from person to person and from place to place and from culture to culture. 
There are many cultures that have more than two sets of gender roles or identities. Some of these include the two-spirit, which is a more modern umbrella term um, that most Native Americans use. This one identity has its whole own set of controversies with it that I will discuss at a later date. The next one being Mahu, which is one of the native people of Hawaii. Uh, and I'm going to be going over all of these third genders in the next episode because the next episode is all about non-binary genders. And we'll discuss more about what that entails when we get there. I'm just here to give you some examples of different cultures that have different perceptions of gender roles and gender identities. And the third one I have here is, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, is Hijra from Southern Asia, though it is mostly, from what I've found, mostly associated with the countries of India and Bangladesh, but I'm pretty sure it's in other countries in Southern Asia as well. So, now that we understand the difference between biological sex and gender identity, this is where we come into section three where we're going to talk about gender expression and self-expression. So this should not be confused with gender identity. Gender expression is the way in which one expresses their gender through means such as clothing, speech, hairstyle, makeup, and a lot more. Most gender expression falls somewhere on the spectrum of masculine to androgynous to feminine feminine and if you remember in the last episode i talk about or the greek philosopher sappho of lesbos she's the one that's typically credited with coming up for this scale and even coming up with the word androgynous in the first place so obviously masculine is mostly associated with male feminine is mostly associated with female and androgynous typically means a mixture or somewhere in the middle between masculine and feminine or male and female. Now, there is a wide variety of ways that people express themselves outwardly. And this is not just limited to gender expression. There is the classic, you know, people wearing pride flags or wearing whatever clothing that they have that they prefer. Um, and that's, you know, that's what most people in the LGBT community think of when we think of self-expression. Though there are also other forms of self-expression, such as religious expression, as shown in this illustration. Now, self-expression is something that is very important because when you look at psychology, especially adolescent psychology, one of the most important things for them to be able to do in order to grow up to have healthier lifestyles and less mental health issues is being able to express themselves in a safe environment without fear of being ridiculed. Now this goes for any, any child, not necessarily an LGBT child. This goes for everyone. Everyone should be able to express themselves in however way they want through clothing, through makeup, through hairstyles, through tattoos or piercings. Um, and I think we as a society need to become more accepting of that idea of self-expression being a healthy thing that everyone needs to do in order for this to really work out because that's one of the bigger problems when we are going we're going to have an episode in the future about issues that lgbt issue that lgbt people face and one of the bigger issues is definitely uh being able to express oneself in a safe and accepting environment so one's gender expression does not always align with gender identity. And that's perfectly fine. It's a completely normal thing. People typically call this cross-dressing, though that 
tends to have negative connotations in a lot of places. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call it self-expression for this slide. And I'm going to give you some small examples. The first one that I can think of is Forest from Fire Emblem Fates. And yes, I understand the irony of using that specific game as an example of a character for the LGBT series, given that game's uh, handling of LGBT people. So for those of you who haven't played the game and who don't know, Forrest, depicted here, is a cisgender male. And cisgender means someone who identifies with the sex assigned to them at birth, whereas a transgender individual is someone who does not. We talked a bit about that in the first episode, and I just wanted to bring it up again to clarify uh, the definitions in case you had forgotten. So Forrest here is a cis male. However, he's really into a lot of feminine things, like fashion and sewing, and if I remember correctly, he even likes baking pastries. And he dresses, obviously, in a very feminine way. He wears his hair long and uh, done up very femininely, and that is a big part of his character arc, is finding out how to become accepted by his father, who is not so accepting of these decisions that Forrest makes. However, through the whole thing, Forrest does maintain that he identifies as male, he identifies as a cisgender male, he does not identify as a woman in any way, he just likes to wear the feminine clothing because he thinks it looks nice and he enjoys making the clothing. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have pretty much every single tomboy character ever written. Um, I just use Gogo from Big Hero 6 because she was literally the first one that came into my head when I thought about this. Um, we all know the trope of the tomboy who doesn't like wearing dresses, doesn't like wearing heels, prefers like, you know, more masculine clothing, more masculine ways of speaking so on and so forth, but they still identify as female and not as trans in any way. So these are just two small examples of how one's gender expression does not always line up with their gender identity, which in turn does not always line up with someone's biological sex. And so this is the recap. Firstly, we know that biological sex relates to physical and biological attributes of one's body and is not limited to just male and female. Gender identity, secondly, does not always align with one's biological sex. And finally, gender and self-expression is an important part of a person's life and should be respected. Um, as I said, uh, I didn't want to go into too, too many of the details because it's kind of depressing and I'm saving most of the depressing stuff for a later video when we talk about the struggles that LGBT people face, but you should know that not accepting someone and not allowing someone to express themselves, especially when they're at a younger age, is very de detrimental to their mental health and can increase things such as mental illness, r rates of suicide, and and self-harm as well as causing things like addiction and being in having more toxic relationships and like I said there's going to be a whole episode later dedicated to all the depressing stuff um, and that's not this episode I wanted to keep this episode light and as a basic introduction to gender and gender theory so that's what this one is it's a bit shorter like a lot shorter than the first one and the rest of the episodes are hopefully going to be about this length, roughly each. So in the next episode, like I said, we are going to be covering uh, non-binary and third genders. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment of this episode, and I'll answer them in the recap section of the next episode. There weren't any questions for me to answer from the last episode, so I don't have any to answer in this section here. If you don't feel like posting a public comment, you can always go to my Twitter or my Tumblr, 
and private message me there with your questions and I'll be make sure to answer them as well and complete anonymity is perfectly fine if that's what you prefer so I'm cutting away here I have a few more things to say after I do and after that I will see you all in the next episode Hey, I just wanted to give a huge thanks to my friend Mikareen on Tumblr for letting me use her artwork in this video. Link for her blog is down in the description below. Make sure you commission her if you have the money and the time. She's a really great artist, and her commissions are always high quality. I would also like to give a shout out to the artist Nazok on DeviantArt. I didn't ask her permission to use her art in this episode, because she has this disclaimer on her profile on her DeviantArt that she's totally fine with people using her artwork and not even crediting her, but I definitely wanted to credit her because her art is amazing. So I hope you all give her a follow on DeviantArt. And with that, let's end the video. See you all in the next episode.